Do you like CrossFit? Do you like CrossFit? No. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say I like it a pretty decent amount. I definitely think I need it almost more than I like it. Like. This is my time. I'm on the rise. Can't hold me down. I'm too fly. This is my time. Ready to shine. Brighter than all of the lights. Cause when it's game time. Seconds away and the game's on the line. There ain't no doubt in my mind. Beating the buzzer like. This is my time. This is my moment. You better bet that I'm on it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Be Stellar Podcast. I'm your host, Stella Atwood. This is mom producer, Meredith Atwood. And on today's episode, we have Elsie Larson. Yay! Welcome. Yay, it's a party. Um, First thing I want to say is congrats on placing second in the 16-17 girls division at the games this year. I want to talk a little bit about this past year and how much you have grown so you placed um 19th in semis last year yeah and then you placed second at the games this year what have you done to improve this past year that have like outside the gym or inside the gym i want to hear all about it and what you have done and if you have tell us your ways (laughs) tell us your ways we want to hear it (laughs) um well so i started crossfit 2021 I think so I'm still relatively new to it and I think over time just like I finally this year what I've been saying is like I finally feel like a crossfitter like I actually know what I'm doing I like look at a workout and I kind of have an idea of how like I should pace it and stuff but I definitely my coach's programming is really good just a lot of imams like the amount of 30 minute imams we did over the summer was crazy and um yeah just focusing on my weaknesses but not not too much and just overall I love my coach's programming and a lot of imams a lot of like olympic lifting I have a teammate who also kind of coaches me in olympic lifting which I really appreciate so, um, yeah, it was crazy, though. I feel like a completely different athlete, like, after semis this year and to the games. Like, I feel like a completely different athlete with my training and all of that stuff. Now, who's your coach? Garrett Plaza. He was my gymnastics coach um, from ages, I think, 10 till 15 when I quit. Wow. 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 So when did you start gymnastics? Were you 10? No, I was, like, probably two and a half, like, baby classes. Wow. Yeah. So that was, like, your whole sports background? Yeah, I did ballet probably from, like, five till I was maybe seven. And then I just, my parents were like, you can't do that as well. And ballet was really boring. (laughs) So I decided to stop. Now, how did you, like, find CrossFit after gymnastics? So the gymnastics gym I was going to, we actually partnered with a CrossFit building. Like you could walk to the CrossFit gym. And so every Thursday we'd like do a CrossFit class. And that was probably when I was like 12. And then as the gym kind of grew, we stopped doing those CrossFit classes. So I always knew what CrossFit was and I loved conditioning. Like in gymnastics, that was my favorite thing (laughs) was the conditioning. And I remember like one time going up there and doing CrossFit. And one of the guys coming up to me and was like, oh, you could be the next Tia Clara to me. And I was like, who's that? He like told me about the documentaries and I watched it on Netflix. And I was like, oh, that's cool. But I don't really like CrossFit like that. Like I want to be a gymnast. So and then I broke my foot. 2020 I think 2020 or beginning of 2021 I broke my foot in gymnastics and I was a level nine gymnast and then um what does I that had, mean what is a level nine mean? that's like I mean I know elite. it probably is like one two three four five six and nine but like yeah. what give us some perspective on what what a level nine means okay so there are 10 levels Okay. And the first five, the first five <laughs> levels are called compulsory levels. I think there's level one, but usually gyms start at like level three. There are some I've seen like do level two, but those are for the little babies. And usually we don't make them compete. But the compulsory levels, they all have the same routines on each event. 
same music, same skills. And then once you reach level six, it's optional levels. So you get to pick your own music for your floor routine. You get to make up your own floor routine and beam routine and all those routines. You just have to have a certain level of skills in each of them. So level nine is a pretty high level. And then 10 is like anyone who goes to 10 is probably going to be a collegiate gymnast. And then after that is like elite and then the like Olympians and stuff. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I helpful. see you. Let's go back to um you loving conditioning because I've <laughs> talked to like a few CrossFitters who were past gymnasts and they were like, I hate conditioning. Like it was the worst part. Why? I think it was just easier for me I like conditioning and I love drills which is also weird like in gymnastics I just love doing the basics and the things where I don't have to think too much I'm like a very nervous person and in gymnastics that's not good like I get mental blocks all the time but it was nice to always have a fallback that like no matter what I can push myself very hard and like I'm not going to get a mental block like running right it's like don't I don't have to think I just do and it was kind of like therapeutic and I kind of got to step away from being nervous and just like work as hard as I could and it's not like I could really fail at that I guess back to your broken foot um ouch how did that happen yeah explain (laughs) please um my coach teases me about it a lot but I was doing an aerial full off the beam so do you know what an aerial is yeah Okay, yeah, so aerial and then back layout full off the beam into the pit. And we had moved the tumble track closer to the beam, and that kind of made me nervous. There was a metal part on the tumble track, and I was like, I don't want to hit that. That would hurt. And I probably wasn't going to hit it. But And the beam was also closer to the edge of the pit, but I also didn't realize that. So I went for my aerial, and I went crooked away from the tumble track, but I already planned on pulling myself to that side so I pulled myself even more and I landed with one of my feet on the edge of the pit and it's not it's not not padded but the padding is like about that much and I landed and I was like that hurt a bit so I broke three of my metatarsals so thankfully it's not like in the joint of the ankle it's just like on your foot it's like these right here and I was just in a boot for like six weeks I think Oh. I broke one metatarsal and that was no fun. So three <laughs> is probably no fun. <laughs> yeah, it was not fun. <laughs> Do you still like feel it sometimes? Like a little bit of pain? No, no, nothing. That's good. The, it's not like, coming until she's 40. And then she'll oh. be like, oh, there's those metatarsals when it's raining outside. <laughs> I don't think so. The calluses over them, like, are pretty big. Like, I've seen the x-rays and stuff. So the guy said, like, my doctor said it should be stronger than it was right. before you broke it. So That's the only benefit to breaking bones is they do come back stronger. But that's yeah. the really only one I can think of. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about your pets. Mom, do you want to pull up these photos? Oh, yes, yes. Let, let me of pull your up pets these. because you have which, a lot. Which pet yeah. do we want first? The cat. Well, one Wait, of them two kitties yeah all right here we go i'm still not very good at sharing the screen with Ooh. okay okay explain explain this one i think my little sister took that she loves the cats i do like the cats too but she's like those are her babies and we have so many pictures of them on our phones <laughs> but that is lotus he's about two years old no he's not two he's probably one he's pretty young he's very chunky Compared to his sister, he's pretty chubby. Um, he has like kind of raccoons mark raccoon markings on his like back and tail, so he kind of reminds me of a raccoon. But he's really sweet. Since is this his sister? <laughs> yeah, that's his sister. <laughs> she's much smaller. She's like the size of a kitten, like, Aww. and she's not gonna get any bigger. Okay, what's her name? Her name's Robin. She looks terrified in this picture. Yeah. <laughs> They're really good cats. Since I have a lot of siblings, like my little brothers will pick them up all the time. And not so nice, not like hurting them ways, but a way a cat probably doesn't want to be picked up, but they never bite or scratch. So Aww. I really appreciate them for that. All right. Ooh. Who's this one? <laughs> That's Willie. He's the oldest. We got him when we moved here. So it was funny. Like when we first moved here, we just had a trailer. 
and we weren't like it was a kind of a crazy move like we didn't get a house yet and so we were in a camper for about a month with six kids and a puppy and he was the puppy with us oh wow yeah okay i want to get back to that story but let's finish out the yeah. pets <laughs> <laughs> the one with the white marking she's maddie um she's i think she's two and then the other one he's halt and he's like three and what kind of doggies are these okay so the one with the white she's actually a bernadoodle she okay. doesn't really look like it she doesn't have the brown markings and then the other one is a labradoodle but he has like more poodle than lab there's like a certain like way you say it like what type but uh -huh. they're both more. doodles yes yeah <laughs> and back to that let's talk let's talk about your family because um six siblings yep break it down okay so my oldest sister is in college right now and she is 18 and then um my youngest brother is gonna turn five in october so it's the order it's girl girl boy girl girl boy boy so i have two younger brothers mm -hmm. um right next to each other so that's probably the craziest part the sister af so after me it's a brother and he does wrestling football and baseball and he's 14 and then the one after that, she is a gymnast. She's at, she's really good. I'm really impressed with her. And she's 13. Then the other sister is 10, I think. The other one, the brother is 8. And then the youngest is about to turn 5. Did they That's all amazing. go to the games with you? Uh, everyone except my brother because he had football and my older sister in college. So just the younger ones. Now, how does one, like, travel with such a large family? Um, painfully. Definitely <laughs> painfully. <laughs> it's, we have a, we used to have a 15-passenger, like, raised roof van, so it was, like, really big, but now we have a one that doesn't have a raised roof. I don't know how many seats it has, but just enough for everyone to fit. And so it's always just a little bit squished, and it was harder when we had younger kids these younger kids on car drives are such a pain. But <laughs> actually, honestly, I think the four-year-old is the best in the car. He'll just like zone out, no TV, just literally look out the window. And I think the 14-year-old boy and the 10-year-old girl, they're probably the most annoying. They talk the most and complain. So how has having that many siblings helped you become a better athlete and competitor? Because I'm yeah. sure that there's some connection here. Yeah, so they definitely push me a lot. Um, I always, like, look up to my older sister. She's a cross-country runner. And so she ran with me over this summer, and she'd have, like, her easy runs, 50-minute runs, and I'd go on those with her. And <laughs> I hated every second of it, but I loved doing it with her because we just got to talk, have a little bit of sister time. And then um, the oldest boy in our family, me and him are very competitive and have always been, and we always argue about everything. Like one time he was trying to convince me that baseball was harder than gymnastics, <laughs> and he still thinks baseball is harder no, than No, no, no. It sounds like you got one of those brothers, Stella. I do. <laughs> Everything's he, harder. <laughs> yep. He's fully convinced, but he's really, really strong, and sometimes he'll work out with me, and he'll push me more than I expect, like... I'll be ahead of him, but not not as much as I want to be <laughs> in a workout. So. And you said he was, he's 14 then. Yeah. He's the 14 year old. Okay. Yeah. I see a lot of similarities. Me and my brother were just like, who's better at this? Who's better? Or who has it harder? Like, it's just like, who? Constant <laughs> fighting. So great. Yeah. Actually, I do want to know kind of how your family supports you through CrossFit and like who is there for you during, you know, when you're in the gym or whatever. My mom and my gym CrossFit coach are starting a gymnastics gym, like, connected to our CrossFit building. So she's always driving me there and supports me a lot in those ways, like, always getting me there and staying there sometimes for hours on end, cooking food for me. <laughs> That's definitely a big support. And um, 
Yeah, my sister, before she went to college, she would come and work out with me sometimes. And it's just nice to have people around you, no matter if they're, like, pushing you or not. People around you just, like, as a community. And my little siblings always make things a lot funnier. So that's definitely a way they help me in CrossFit and while working out. They definitely lighten it up a bit. Yeah. Do you find it hard to be nice to your people when you're in competition? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> definitely guilty <laughs> I get like nervous and my mom will be asking me like things about the workout and I just like I'm in a zone and I nothing like I don't want to talk to anyone I just like tunnel vision on what I'm gonna do and it stresses me out when people like ask me questions but I won't ever like yell but I'll definitely get a little bit snappy like please be quiet. I'm not messing with you. That kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm sure like all the athletes um, at the games this past weekend or a week ago, all of us were probably really snappy to our parents and the parents were just like, we're just here to cheer you on. And we're just like, we just love you so much. Just yell at us. We don't mind. It's fine. Yeah. We don't mind. I mean, not really. (laughs) If it continued for weeks on end, maybe, but yeah, I definitely I find it. it more on online qualifiers. Like the this past weekend, I don't think I was very like high strung or anything. There were a couple moments. No, I, I I really don't think I was that like angry or snappy this weekend. Thankfully, it's mostly just online qualifiers that give me stress yeah. me out so much. Or when like I'll finish it and my coach will be like, "We need to redo that one." And and be like, like, I just Whoa. did it. <laughs> what? Yeah, like, I understand where they're coming from, but, like, I need a minute. Yeah. Give me, like, 15 minutes. And depending on the workout, you might need a day or two. Because sometimes I know we don't even say anything to Stella after it's done. But, you know, I'll, Griffin and I will be like, oh, is she going to redo that one? We're like, let's not tell her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's give her a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how it should be. Definitely. Yeah. So let's talk about the games. The obvious... The obvious thing here. Um, what was your favorite workout from the games? Or let's talk about your favorite one and then the one that you loved because you did really well. Um, my favorite one was probably the sled push and handstand walk one. That was one was just like a lot of fun. I liked the elimination style and it was quick, so it didn't hurt too much. My legs definitely did not like me after that. It was so but, bad. Yeah. That one was fun. I really, really liked that one. I'm trying to think of the others. Yeah, that was definitely my favorite. And the one I did best on was the D-ball squat cleans. And I I mean, I liked that one, but it was weird because in the warm area, I was watching all the other girls and there were some girls like cycling the D-ball and it's a hundred pounds. And I was like, I, I can cycle too. That's about it. Like... <laughs> So going out there, I really wasn't thinking about winning or anything. I was just kind of like, I'm not going to get no reps. I'm not going to rush or look next to me. So like when I heard my name being called like, oh, she's in front. I was really surprised, actually. Yeah. Like how did the warm up area kind of look for y'all in the 16 to 17? I know how it looked for the 14 to 15, but there are some really good girls in the 16 to 17. It's just like, whoo. Y'all are so good. This is nerve wracking. I kind of underestimate underestimate myself a little bit because I'm looking around and all these other girls, like a lot of them have been in these situations before they've been to the games. They know what they're doing. They have their little routines. And I'm over here just like, I'm just going to do some stretches and warm up a bit. Like I don't have any crazy routines when I'm warming up. I probably don't warm up enough. But yeah, it's definitely intimidating. I think everybody had to warm up a lot because it was so cold in the warm-up area. It was freezing, and then we would get on the Echo Bikes, and it would just be a fan blowing in our face. It was just like, ooh. Yeah. Well, tell everyone, Stella, why anyone who wasn't there, why it was so cold. Because it the hockey arena, we competed in hockey arena, and the area we competed, they, they melted the ice, so it wasn't as cold in the actual area. But then you get to the warm-up area, and they I think they just put mats over the ice or something. So it was freezing. 
I don't know how cold it was, but all of us were just wrapped up in jacks, jackets and sweatpants. <laughs> like, what was your strategy going into that Deeple event? I know you already talked a little bit about it, but did you have any like, okay, I'm going to do this rep scheme or I'm going to go this fast? Um, before we went out there, we like saw the girl cycling it and I tried cycling a couple and my coach was like, okay, you're going to cycle a really big set in the beginning and then like break it up in smaller sets. And then the last set cycle another big set. And I went out there and I cycled two and I almost fell over (laughs) and (laughs) I dropped it. And I just started doing singles because I knew like, this is not efficient. And then I was like, okay, I'm not cycling at all. I'm just going to pick it up as fast as I can, like pick it up, squat, drop it. And I think that worked pretty well. I didn't look next to me. I didn't really focus on what everyone else was doing at that moment. I just was kind of like, okay, what I'm doing, pick it up, drop it. And then for the carries, like I knew my coach would kill me if I dropped it. And it was a really short carry compared to what it would have been at the pit. So I don't think I ever really felt the need to drop it. It was just like run as fast, as, like bear hug and just run. Yeah. I, there really wasn't too much strategy with that one. Yeah. What was your favorite memory from the games? Like, let's talk about your favorite memory during a workout where you're like, yes, I crushed that. And then a favorite memory where you like meet people or you're just like, yay, smiley memory. <laughs> or oh, just like one memory. I don't know. Give me something. <laughs> okay. I'll think. Give me a memory. Okay. So lifting event, that was fun because I was warming up with Reese Littlewood and we were – Like, I think our PRs are roughly the same, and we're warming up clean and jerks. And I was planning on, like, going out there and opening with maybe, like, 205, 210, maybe lower. I don't know. But um, I had never hit 215 on a clean and jerk. I had squat cleaned it, but we just put it on the bar, and I did that. So I PR'd in the um, warm-up area with my jerk. And after that, I was like, okay, I'm opening with 210. And so I get out there and we're doing the lifting event. And I open with 175 on my snatch. And I was like, okay, I can cycle 165 decently. Like, I just need to focus and 175 should be fine. And I go for it and I don't lock out my arms on the bottom. And I drop the bar on my back, immediately push it over, drop it to the ground. And I'm like, so embarrassed. That Bro, was I watched on the live stream and I'm like, who is that? I was so embarrassed. That was, oh, no. and I picked it back up and I snatched it. Fine. Yeah. No, we saw that. <laughs> I was like, dang, turn up. <laughs> it, that was, that was interesting. I mean, hey, at least she didn't miss it on the second attempt. That would have been more embarrassing. Yeah, definitely. I'm very thankful with how like that event turned out. I think I was most nervous for that one because two attempts is not enough at all but then we went to the clean and jerks and I did 210 and I was gonna go 220 and like my coach is like no 225 225 so I did 225 so that was a pretty big PR for me and it was crazy just like looking back at my clean and jerks have never been like as strong like compared to my snatches so I was definitely very thankful for like that type of PR so you going into the games your best was 210 my best was 205. You did a 20 pound PR. Yeah, but <laughs> I did, no. I squat cleaned 225. I just never jerked it. Okay. And um but yeah. <laughs> are you a split <laughs> jerker pretty- or are you a push jerker? Split jerk. Split jerk all the way. Okay. I was about to be like push jerk. That's yes, amazing. Insane. <laughs> It's and so I'm, risky too. Like yeah. I, I want to talk about like I want to talk the, about the like strategy this, there. Like was the your coach stands just like two twenty five? My coach would have been like, "Nor, <laughs> <laughs> no, you stay at a weight you know you can hit." Yeah, I think it was just like kind of go big or go home. I didn't really feel like I had anything to lose. I never been here before. Like I came in at like seven like seventh and I don't know I was just like I want a PR go big or go home like these other girls have crazy heavy lifts I'm looking over at some girls and they're hitting like right around the way I'm hitting and it was kind of just like I just I just have to do it and 
I think my coach, he definitely, and like me personally, when I'm PRing, I don't like really go until failure. I go until like I PR. So <laughs> like five pounds, like five, five pound PR. And it was like easy. I don't really want to go till I fail because I'm afraid I'm going to get hurt. So I'll just go till it feels pretty hard. <laughs> so I don't know how like legit my PRs are compared to others. I think mine definitely have a little bit of like wiggle room, but, and my coach knows that. And he, definitely was just like no you're doing 225 I love it yeah I mean I think that's the better way to do it is you hit a PR and then you're like I know I could have done five or ten pounds heavier yeah definitely and sometime like in the next few months you hit that and then you're like okay I could have gone heavier again it's better than being like oh that's my max for sure <laughs> yeah definitely. like I found the limit because I almost died yep <laughs> yeah so I definitely like that. What you're moving up to the individuals, right? Yeah. Woo! How you feeling? Um, intimidated, but kind of ready. It's gonna be another climb to the top, I guess. And yeah, I'd love to make it to semifinals. That would be crazy. Yeah. So, like, what does this next year look like for you? Or from September to the Open, what does it look like for you? Um, so this year is my senior year in high school, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, probably, I think we're doing a pretty big strength cycle. We usually do big strength cycles over the winter. You know, you kind of bulk over the winter and then you cut for the summer. So this is going to be more of like a strength cycle. I don't exactly know what we're focusing on in particular. Um, but yeah, just normal. I usually only do... Um, one a days unless I'm like getting close to a competition but I think I'm going in evenings mostly and then I'm going to start coaching gymnastics with my mom in the evenings too which I'm excited about funny question because I always got like little funny questions for people are you ready <laughs> yes all right for sure what is your favorite smell smell, smell? yeah <laughs> like does it have to be like a natural smell no nah, it, it like can a- be like yeah sharpies Hmm. that's a hard question yeah. i like gasoline okay <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, me so too. I, can, I can see that you know like i i understand where people are coming from but i don't i don't like smell it a lot you know yeah don't take that wrong okay. but when i'm pumping gas i'm like i like that smell yeah it's nice <laughs> um i mean i like the smell of fall like outside or like the smell before it rains, like how it mm. smells outside. I love when it rains. So I just find like I go outside and it smells like it's going to rain. And I'm like, it's a Bro, happy we're day. like gasoline. And Elsie's like, oh, <laughs> we're like, we like Sharpies and gasoline Sharpies and, and hairspray. <laughs> hey, I mean, I agree, but I don't know. There's better smells. Like, yeah, there. definitely. I like bananas. Bro, me too. Have you, oh wait, have you seen those like Sharpies? They're not Sharpies, but they're called like Mr. Sketch. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Belly markers. And there's a banana banana scent. (laughs) Mm. Yeah, we get those all the time. Like with me having like a lot of younger siblings, like I had those when I was younger and my siblings get them. So we have them in our house right now. I could probably go downstairs and find them. Those are so good. I love those smells. And then, like, the cherry one, too, is pretty fire. Mm. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> that was a good question. <laughs> are was... you patting yourself on the back for that one, Stella? <laughs> good job, Stella. That was a great written question that you just asked. Phenomenal. Okay. Um, CrossFit. Do you like CrossFit? <laughs> Do you like CrossFit? <laughs> No. Uh, yeah, I I'd, I'd say I look like it a pretty decent amount. Um, I definitely think I need it almost more than I like it. Like yeah, I really find, like I this is my rest week, and I was during the games I was sick. I had a cough, mm-hmm. <laughs> but so afterwards I think I had a fever on Tuesday, so I'm kind of recovering from a cold or whatever I had, but um usually rest weeks like I'm just taking one week off 
are so hard for me. Like the middle of the week, I'll have like an identity crisis and I'm like, what's happening? Like, I just, I don't know what to do. And then I'll go work out. And I'm like, oh, I needed this. Because I feel like through like being a gymnast and stuff, I just, I'm like, I need that high intensity stuff mm-hmm. to feel okay. I don't know if that's a good thing, but I definitely I need it. I think it just is. That's what I was telling Stella this week. I was like, it's not good or bad. It just is. That's like my favorite line from this week. But I think it just (laughs) is. That's what you you need, you know? Yeah, I'm experiencing that right now. I am too as a parent. I don't know what to do. Like, who am I? (laughs) It makes me feel like I should pick up a different hobby or something. Because I'm like, oh, who am I without the gym? That's bad. But it just is. 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 It is what it is. Yeah. That's just the way we feel. Um, but Griffin's making Stella take this whole week off. And then I jumped in. I was like, I think she needs one more. So she's actually, she gets to move her body this week, but no more, no gym this week either. Cause yeah. I just, I mean, somebody said the open is around the corner and I thought about that and I was like, <laughs> Oh my gosh, it kind of is October, November, December, like, yeah, you need to take another week off. <laughs> yeah. It really is just, it never ends. It's like no off season, really. Yeah, there really isn't. That's kind of how it was in gymnastics. Like, you'd have meet season over the winter for me, and then upgrade season over the summer. Which upgrade, like, it's not time off. It might be more fun, like less monotonous, but it's not time off. Like, one year I was doing 30 hours a week. I was in the gym. I think I was like 12 at the time and that was weird like I wasn't even that good of a gymnast I'm not saying I was bad but for how long I spent in the gym I was kind of like why am I getting these scores over meet season (laughs) so that's a lot do you have like an all-time favorite crossfit movement that you just love to do probably snatches does it just like click for you? You're just like, yeah, yep, I know how to do it. Yeah, it feels good. It feels natural. It's like smooth and usually pretty relaxing unless my body's hurting. Yeah. That's where your gymnastics comes in too. Just moving your body under a bar and knowing where you are in space yeah. and time. I mean, that's your gymnastics. Because like most people that haven't weightlifted from a young age cannot just snatch. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, real watching bad. people snatch that just started <laughs> is really hard to watch, but I get it. Yeah. I get it. You can't just pick up a barbell and move it perfectly. Definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> not you. You did Olympic weightlifting growing no. up. No. I'm talking about before It's hard to snatch. Dinner. Yeah. That's the thing. You just, you, you, you don't know how good you have it that you can, that you know how to snatch. You just take a straight yeah. off the street and be like, hey, pick this bar up in one movement. <laughs> that doesn't compute yeah it's definitely it's definitely easy to pick up bad habits I think that's what like my coach when we first started like when I first started CrossFit when we were doing snatches he was I was he was the only one who could coach me on them and it was just very much like very monotonous uh, just a ton of drills we barely focused on clean and jerks it was just snatches and I really appreciate that do you have any advice for young teen athletes who want to go to the games or want to play second? <laughs> um, probably just take it slow and it's really your own journey. Going into the games, I my goal like it really wasn't to podium. Obviously, like everyone wants the podium and I was hoping to either stay where I was or improve. But it's really just personal improvements and don't try to compare yourself to other people. You don't know like what their background is, how hard they've worked. They don't know how hard you worked or what obstacles you went through. And I think just the background of everyone's um, just story, like you're never going to see all of it, no matter what they tell you. And you really can't assume anything of anyone. So just focus on yourself. Take it slow. You don't want to burn out. You don't want to hurt yourself. It, it's really the long, the long road, the long journey. And I think that's really important just to, to just focus on the journey because that's, that's the fun part. Like this past weekend was really fun, but it's, it was just three days. Like you really have to look at 
how how much time you put in, how many sacrifices, and pat yourself on the back for that. That was very nicely worded. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thanks, Elsie. This is great. King of the jungle, heart of a lion. Four, three, two, one. Watch out, here I come. This is my time.